Raga, thank you for joining us for our interview. I'm really happy to have you uh, answer my questions. Love your work. That's fantastic. Um, and it's about uh, cinema. So I'll get right to it. What was the first time you remember going to the cinema? My God, I don't remember the first time going to the cinema, but I can tell you that when I was probably really small, like, I don't know, five, six, I don't actually remember, but uh, we used to get, uh, we used to invite all my friends for birthdays and every birthday we used to watch a film. And uh, it's funny because uh, when I was a child, the films that I used to absolutely love are the films that today I wouldn't be a part of. <laughs> So uh, I wouldn't take names, but I was a big, big Bollywood mainstream cinema fan, obviously, because that was such a big part of the culture. Yeah. But I do remember watching them. But if I may take the liberty to say that actually, uh, I one of my, my, the first English film, I think, I think I saw, and that might not be the first, but the first memory I have is actually because in Pune, where I come from, there was only one theater at that time that showed English films. And, um, that um, the first one I think I saw, remember, was Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> and <That's a> harsh. <laughs> it was amazing. I loved it. <laughs> and, and I think the first, and then I started getting introduced to very different, I mean, from, away from Bollywood and started getting introduced. So I was still in school and I had gone to a tiny festival at NFAI there, the Film Art National, uh, National uh, Archive of film India anyway um, and they showed one flew over the cuckoo's nest and that's probably one of the I mean I, I was so used to watching just Hindi cinema and Bollywood until that time and then I was quite young still and I saw that film I, I film I remember I was so disturbed and I went home and I never knew that a film is supposed to make you feel that disturbed as, as well mm -hmm. uh, because normally Bollywood films always end Happy. with like like you know Everything's happy, everything's fine. Um, yeah, a big, a big song and dance routine. Uh, that's one of the reasons. I think I, I used to watch uh, Bollywood movies, 70s, into the 80s maybe, but then after that, lost interest in them because it just didn't say anything to me. Okay. Uh, and I was like watching uh, Sacred Games and I seen you in it and I went, fantastic. We can make these amazing programmes that are there. Uh, there's quite a lot of this stuff that's really good. But... You, you were trained, you were, you, you were on theatre before yeah. film. What, what do you like? Is, is it torn between two or do you like both as equal? You see, I don't, I don't normally compare. They're both very different uh, for me and they both have fantastic things to offer. I did theatre for a long time, about 13 years. We, I was doing uh, shows continuously and I um, absolutely loved every bit of it. The only reason I haven't done theater for a while is because it works very differently in India. Uh, so it, it, it isn't like, you know, you open a play and then you do a run for whatever, two mm -hmm. months, six months, eight months, and then you stop and it doesn't work like that. First of all, the theater barely pays here. So when I was doing theater, I was pretty broke mm -hmm. and then I needed to make money. And then uh, the shows are so dispersed and they, and they sort of, when you have your shows spread over a year, you know, maybe whatever, seven odd shows, and then you take up a film or, or a series and you can never go back to do the show. And that's really not fair because there are people working in the show just for the love for it and not for the money. So it started becoming really difficult for me to juggle the two. And it was just a conscious decision to stop uh, theater for the time being because it's not possible to plan properly here. But I will do it again at some point. Fantastic. So, film then, what would be your most sought after role of any film that you've seen? You would have went, Ken, if I could be an, the, the lead actor in that film, what film would it have been? You know, I stopped doing that a long time ago <laughs> uh, because there are just too many. I, I want to be happy. And if I start thinking like that, I'll be unhappy forever because there are just so many wonderful roles written. And to be honest with you, when you like a role so much, you, the actors have really performed well most of the times. Otherwise you go like, I oh, just such a great role, but you know. But in both situations, I think I, what's not mine is not mine. What, what is mine, I need to make the most of it. So I don't think like that. I've never been like, 
I wish I had got that part because there are just too many and I won't be able to sleep at night, trust me. <laughs> I know you're a foodie, right? And one of my yeah. things about cinema, apart from the great movie you're going to see, is the snacks. So that's why I go to the cinema. I love the snacks. So if you were at the cinema, what would you go for? What do you have? You see, I, I love food. I adore food. But I hate when people open their packet and keep munching when I'm trying to watch a film. Uh, so I actually, I mean, if there's a blockbuster film and then it's really a lot of fun watching the film in India because everyone's screaming and everyone's cheering and I love the energy. But if it's a film that, a serious film, I really am invested and I'm watching it because I'm in the film, then I actually prefer watching in England because uh, then people are far more careful of the sounds they may make while watching the film. And I really, I find it very disturbing. Yeah, people are constantly talking on the phones. I mean, not because of COVID, I haven't been to the theaters in two years, but yeah, people are constantly talking on their phones. Everybody's phone lights up on like the card uppers that are always yeah. on in India. So it's the same thing, you know, the phone lights are on and this, like, it's just, I find it very disturbing. I've, I've only been to the cinema once in India and I was, yeah, I was quite um, shocked when the big music scenes and that came on. There was folk dancing in the aisles, which was great. You know what I mean? They'd been there obviously and they knew the moves and that. That was brilliant. Um, what famous, or oh, what Scottish movie, have you seen any Scottish movies or to say which is your favourite? You know what? I don't, I've never seen a film thinking it's Scottish. <laughs> is the Wicker Man Scottish? Dish. Yes, that uh, has yeah, uh, Wicker Man Squash. Um, have you seen Train Spotting? Of course, yes. Of course, yes, yes. Another favourite. Of that, or uh, my, one of my favourites is Restless Natives. If you get a chance, watch that. What was it called again? Restless, rest, Restless Natives. Uh, it's shot in about the 80s. It's a teen movie. It's good fun. Just All right, I'll watch it. Yeah. Good fun. It's Thanks, cool. I'll, I'll definitely watch it, yeah. So, what's um, if you give me one word to describe why you like going to cinema, I suppose watching it streamed like that in your house, what would it be? Uh, okay, if I have to use a word, I'm going to say submergent. Uh, but I just like to, it's basically, I think you forget yourself. You go to cinema because you forget your life, you forget yourself, and you you literally live somewhat some another experience it's, it's like a submersive theater like it's just you know it's totally you're submerged in is another world and you just experience something forgetting everything about you own life and do you think that's the magic that'll keep cinema alive instead of the digital platforms that are making great productions and great shows i mean i really hope so because I think because of COVID, we don't know how it's going to, what is going to happen, how much are people going to really make the effort to go to cinema. But I think especially in India, you see, there are very few uh, uh, places to find entertainment and you can't always find it at home. Unlike mm -hmm. say London, uh, where I also live, but in like London, we don't have constant shows going on or big green spaces to go uh, you know, or anything like that. So our main um, thing is uh, food and uh, cinema, you know? Mm. So I hope that it doesn't die. But yes, people forget, people go there to forget themselves. And which is why I think our cinema is also so colorful and uh, it sort of always ends happy because people really go to take a break from their lives and a country with so many people, lives really hectic and with such poverty and such yeah. Uh, so that's the reason why we have a culture where the films are made a certain way and now they're changing because you know I think the world's getting smaller and a million reasons but what's the movie that you've seen the most times is there something you keep going back to you just draws you for different things um right the the Hindi film that I used to watch a lot was Andaz Apna Apna but the English film actually that I watch a lot, actually, I mean, if I'm really, whatever, just tired and I want to watch something just to lift my mood, it's as good as it gets. Uh, it, I absolutely love that film and I can watch it a hundred times. And I've probably watched it a hundred times. And uh, 
this is not a t that is not film but it's a tv show but i love friends i love shit's creek and i love um arrested development but these are not here this is not tv so i don't know that it's the same we were but, just talk sorry but as good as it gets yeah no we were just talking about friends with the kids because they've just started watching all the series and uh, it was something that we grew up with and they love it and they, they watched uh, the reunion which was great you know what i mean i thought it'd be a bit stated yeah. but it was really good yeah it's really sad to see anyway yeah 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 but uh, what, I, what i loved is um sacred games that was one of the i don't know if you call it the new uh, style of um productions that are getting done in india gritty true life kind of things and they've given uh, the female actors some great roles you know what i mean yeah yeah, it's, yeah. And it's fantastic because i've got three girls and a boy and they're going yeah we can really relate to that that's fantastic and they, they were saying it was them that told me to watch it so it's good so if you've seen uh black friday or if you've seen uh gangs of wasaipur or uh, these are i mean anurag's previous films oh, right. very black cool. friday so if you just google anurag kashyap's previous films uh they're, they're very gritty and they're very they're in a similar zone uh but i mean it was a very new thing when sacred games came and came out and even uh ghoul this other fic series that i did came at the same time and at that time uh netflix launched itself quite it was quite massive and of course because of covid covid now everybody's glued to the tv um, mm -hmm. you know there's not much to uh to to uh, watch but if i tell you honestly i can't wait to go to the cinema uh i mean you know but when we make content we know that um certain things are meant for the tv tv as in screen yeah so, certain things are meant to watch on a small screen and things change i mean and there's certain cinema you cannot watch on small screen small screen you know i mean right from tarkovsky and i'm not comparing but i'm just saying that how that you can't watch tarkovsky on a small screen mm. i mean you you also can't watch those amazing uh, blockbuster um i don't know like the new james bond i'm just giving you like a like or the dark yeah. night i'm saying that there's certain films that are made for the cinema like and i Yeah. I'm talking right from people who love Tarkovsky to people who love James Bond, like you know everybody. Yeah. So I think it's a different medium, and it can't be completely switched to a small screen. And are we getting even smaller? Right, people now want to watch uh, content on on, on the phone. phone. Yeah, I remember when I was in college. Uh, one of my really good friends, he's a filmmaker now. uh um, he he was we used to all talk and we used to be like, oh my god, we are going to be indie filmmakers, or probably we're going to be only indie film. and then our biggest uh, competition always is going to be the mainstream it's not even a competition we're nobody like you know and now we realize the actual competition is those two minute content makers <laughs> like you know yeah tiktok that's and everything because everybody wants to watch that mm -hmm. everybody's glued to that and that's becoming more and more sensational but that's quite interesting what you're saying about the the two minute content is that do you think that's making filmmakers make their movies much more uh, same against submersive because you need to be drawn in because people have got that short attention span now yeah i think i think that yeah we we hear that all the time because uh, uh, you know people have such short attention span that everything needs to be like everything needs to be moving so fast mm -hmm. um, and so the expectation from the producer or the networks or whatever are different and it's uh, it's hard because I think good or bad, right or wrong, it is what it is. I'm mm -hmm. not, I'm not being cynical or anything. I'm just saying that it's interesting. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it's not going to change backwards. It's just going to get faster or more. Or maybe we'll all get a bit of a heart attack. Heart attack. Sure. <laughs> But which part? What use actors do and the change in pace of the industry is really all industries changing with forward. But I think in media, it's just so fast. You know what I mean it's just like, to keep up with it is must be difficult for you. I mean to be honest with you Bombay uh, Mumbai Bombay whatever is a very very fast paced city and mm. because I live in London and Bombay it's funny because every time I go to London I feel like I actually give myself more time I do oh. other things but in 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 here yeah, in Mumbai I don't get a second to myself because there is so much work and you know you can work continuously around the clock and I feel that's where covid I think sort of made us pause and get our priorities 
mm-hmm. be organized and i think yeah that probably helped one of the few good things that happened yeah a lot of people have said that yeah totally yeah so have you been up to scotland radical yeah my sister in law lives in scotland in edinburgh oh wow uh, and uh, i once dated a scottish boy and uh, he we drove all the way to maleg Mali, uh, yeah yeah and on the way we stopped at a bothy in a botanical garden and it was just beautiful i mean if we went in the december it was just completely covered in snow yeah. and then i drew i went there all the all the way again with some other friends of mine in the summer which was magnificent and then uh, my sister in law lives in edinburgh so i come i visit uh, i come often than before you need to come for dinner next time you're not visiting yeah 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 definitely i'd love cool. that yeah excellent how is it in uh, are you in bombay at the moment i am in mumbai yes and it's very muggy it's it's been raining a lot and it's raining actually i did come for, to the edinburgh film festival was it 2 years ago uh with a film called a call to spy okay uh, yeah it was it was so much fun it was so much fun i love edinburgh yeah, it's, um, it's the nicest english city in scotland <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really, yeah, yeah. He came for our film, and it was it was a lot of fun. It was really great to attend the festival, and um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I've only been by once, and it was with uh, it was during the Commonwealth Games. We were only there for two days. Ah, uh, okay. And yeah, you said that you it, was, are, it is so fast paced. Are you are you based out of Edinburgh? I am in Edinburgh. Right. Yeah, oh. we've been here since forty seven. 1947 yeah since independence yeah yeah uh, partition yeah so uh, family were uh, just outside lahore and then ah. they, were, they were made refugees amritsar amritsar delhi and then we came to scotland oh, oh. Okay, do you ever go back to pakistan uh, i've got family in delhi uh, okay. i've not been for gosh but 7 years um but we've still got a house there yeah. which is lovely uh, it's getting planned to go yeah but it's it's it changes when you're any kind of a expat community or uh, uh, what you think when you go go there and it's so fast paced and, and india yeah. changes so quickly and we went and it was just like uh, a bit of a shock but um it's still beautiful and the problem is when you go back to india you have to go oh. and meet all the relatives so you never get a chance to see anything you just see inside people's houses you eat ladu you put yeah. on three and a half stone and that's it right so i want to go but wait go fly down to the south and yeah. walk away back up that's the plan but then yeah. covid happened so fingers crossed soon we'll get across yeah, and yeah, do yeah. something like that i'm going to pakistan soon i'm very excited like see i'd love yeah i want to go to pakistan um i want to go to uh karachi just for the the, the seafood it's meant to be amazing I think I'm going to Lahore. If it's I'm going for a film shoot. Um Oh, right, super. Yeah. Is that a, is that a historical movie or Well, I'm not allowed to tell. Oh. <laughs> really interesting now if it's Lahore, obviously it's going to be a historic one. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I've never been and uh oh, yeah. I mean it's really difficult for us to go, so it's just mm-hmm. excited. Yeah. I think it's a little bit easier we can get a visa for um a pilgrimage. visa to go and see the good variety that were there all oh, right okay but apart from that i think it's just as hard it's but hard. not as hard as from india yeah <laughs> which yeah, is it's, it's, it's hard exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. radha thank you very much it's been a pleasure talking to you and can't wait for your next uh, can you tell us what you're working on next or is that a secret No no I can tell you three things that have been announced and then other two things that have not been announced though I won't tell you about them but I have just finished shooting for a film called Mrs Undercover um and it's a it's a dark comedy uh and it's about a agent who's undercover uh-huh. uh then there's another film I just finished shooting yesterday uh that's called Monica my darling um it's uh, directed by Vasan Bala who did uh Mart ko dard nahi i don't know if you've seen it uh and then i'm just starting another film called forensic uh that's 
yeah, next six weeks. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, I can't wait till it all come out, but thank you very much for taking your time to talk to us. Thank you so much. Thank you.